So Franklin had a very busy weekend last weekend. He had a very important date. Uh, if any of you were maybe here or caught it online, uh, Katie, what exactly was Franklin up to on Valentine's Day? Uh, he had a big date on Valentine's Day, a blind date with our octopus, Hazel. Hazel was released last weekend after successfully mating with Franklin during their date. And now it's Franklin's turn to head back out into Puget Sound. Yeah, so Hazel was successfully returned back out to the Puget Sound last week, just after they had that blind date, and a very successful blind date, we should mention. Uh, we had some confirmed mating between Franklin and Hazel, which is something that they do at the very end of their life. So for a giant Pacific octopus, Katie, about how long do they live for? Typically, their lifespan is going to be about three to five years or so. We don't know if exactly how old Franklin is, but probably somewhere towards the end of that range. Yeah, so probably getting closer to the three years old. And he's headed out to the Puget Sound right now. And what does that mean? Uh, is it possible that maybe he could actually mate again? Well, we certainly hope he'll have that chance. He's probably got several more weeks to a few more months of lifespan, and hopefully he'll find some more females and hit it off with them. <laughs> and as he is released out to the sound here, what are some of the things that Franklin might be looking for in a new home out there in the sound? Well, he'll probably look for a den of some sort, a cave or crevice in the rocks or a space under some debris. Those are the types of places octopuses love to hide out here in Puget Sound. Katie, we're noticing there's something that kind of looks like it's opening and closing and opening and closing on the side of Franklin there. What is it that we're observing? You're looking at Franklin's gill slit. He has one of those on each side that allows him to breathe in and out. Wondering, for those of you that are with us here in the Puget Sound Hall, do you have any questions? Anything we haven't talked about yet? Okay, I see a couple of hands. What was your question? Oh, Katie, we want to know how does the octopus attack its prey? Uh, when they are hunting, they will often use their suction cups and arms to grab their prey or enfold it in that webbing that we saw. And then they have a beak like a parrot that is hard and sharp. That's what they use to bite their prey and perhaps to inject a little bit of venom to help them subdue their prey also. Yeah, so they've got a beak inside their mouth to grab a hold of their prey. They've got venom to help them subdue it. And we've got some more questions for you. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so Katie, we're wondering, how does the octopus see underwater? If we tried to open our eyes underwater, it wouldn't be that good of a view. It often <laughs> looks blurry for us because our eyes have adapted for life in the air. The octopus's eyes have adapted for life underwater, so they can see very clearly underwater without any help. It's kind of like the opposite of us. <laughs> 